Yeah, spot Eddie. Yeah, we can hear you. Good. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes Uncle. Yeah, thank you. Greetings to you all once again in the highly exalted name of our loving Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a great joy to be joining you for fellowship this morning. And thank you once again for all your prayers on our behalf. Even as we have been praying and upholding you in our regular prayers. It's a great joy, even though we are <clears throat> miles apart because of the availability of this technology, we are able to meet together in this manner. We thank and praise God for that. We thank God for having brought us to the last Lord's Day in this eight months. And we are Within a few days, we are going to enter into the ninth month of this year. Looking back at the past almost eight months, each one of us can testify to the faithfulness, the graciousness, and the loving kindness of our Lord day after day. Not month after month, I would say, nor week after week, day after day. And that's why with the psalmist, we can say that his faithfulness reached unto the clouds. Not only unto the clouds, but even beyond the clouds in our lives. So this morning, as we are gathered around the table in order to worship our Lord, shall we look into the word of God so that the word of God may inspire our hearts to bring our worship to him. Shall we turn to Psalm 103? Psalm 103 and the first five verses. Psalm 103 and the first five verses. And you look into the Bible as I read these verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Shall we pray? The loving Heavenly Father, our gracious and mighty God, our never failing and never changing God, the Lord who is on the throne, who is in governance and control of everything, the one who is the author and finisher of our faith, the one who is our counselor and also our guide, the one who is our sustainer, the one who is our refuge and strength, in the present day world in which we are living. Above all, he is the God of love, the one who loved us with a great and an everlasting and unchanging and unfathomable and undeserving love, an agape love. This morning, we are in thy presence in this manner because of thy love alone and thy grace and thy mercies toward us. We thank you, Lord, for enabling us to gather together in Bethany, in New York, as I redeemed once around thy table in order to praise, exalt, and glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you for enabling me also, unworthy as I am, to join thy precious people in this worship service. We thank you, Lord, for all those who could come and gather together physically and also those who have been able to join online. And, O oh Lord, as we want to worship you, first of all, express our gratitude to you, pray that thou prepare our hearts through thy precious word, through these few familiar verses that you have read together. And, O oh Lord, it is our aim and ambition that thou alone may be exalted, glorified, honored, and be pleased with our worship. Help us, O Lord. For we ask this prayer with thanksgiving 
in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we all know, this is a very <clears throat> familiar psalm and a psalm written by King David, even as the title says. And the first two verses of this psalm are very well known, particularly in South India. If you visit any home in South India, especially in Tamil Nadu, and even I think in Kerala, particularly predominantly in Tamil Nadu, after every prayer, not individual prayer, but collective prayer, be it a family prayer, <clears throat> or even in the church, after the whole worship service is over, even in Chennai, Jehovah Shema, they repeat these two verses in Tamil. Our dear Uncle Thangavel is there, must be knowing it. He would watch for it. So this has been a practice. Of course, they repeat it, but uh, many of them, they mean it when they repeat these two verses together as a family or as a church. Here we read in the Psalm, particularly these two verses, first two verses, the attitude of the man of God, David. David was not only a great king, was not only a great warrior, he was not only a man who was after God's own heart, but he was a great worshiper of God. And that's why we find many Psalms of worship penned down by King David. And here we see his attitude. He says in verse one, bless the Lord, O my soul. He doesn't say bless the Lord and stop there. Nor does he say bless the Lord, my soul. He says, oh, my soul. He's speaking to his soul and he says, bless the Lord. That means in other words, he wants to praise the Lord, to worship the Lord and adore the Lord. And then he says in the next part of that verse, all that is within me, bless his holy name. All that is within me. If you read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, the Lord Jesus was saying about, mentioning about our spirit, soul, and body. And it means with our spirit, with our heart, with our soul, we ought to be worshiping the Lord. Or one man of God said, it seems uh, this is what David meant. He said, if there was a mouth for each member in his body to speak out, he would command all of them in one accord to lift up their voices and say, bless the Lord, praise the Lord, and worship the Lord. That is what he meant. Why? Because he was so grateful and thankful to the Lord. And in verse one, he says, he's speaking to him himself. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. After saying that, it appears he's not satisfied. I'm sure he would have asked his family also to join with him to bless the Lord or to praise the Lord. But even then, he's not satisfied. We see in the same Psalm, as we go down to verse 20, see what he says here. Bless the Lord, he, his angels, that excel in strength that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. He is asking the angels also to join with him. He is praising the Lord. With his family, he is worshiping the Lord. He is still not satisfied. So therefore, he is calling, inviting all the angels of God to join with him in worshiping the Lord. Is he at least satisfied now? No. See the next verse. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. After calling upon the angels, he is now calling upon the heavenly host, the entire host, the angels of God, 
the 24 elders and the four beasts, he's calling all of them also to join with him in worshiping the Lord. Is he satisfied then? At least now? No. He's calling the ministers of his, all those who minister to the Lord, namely all the priests, the Levites, the high priest, everyone. He's asking them all to join with him to worship the Lord. Is he satisfied at least now? He's still not. See verse 22. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He's now calling upon entire creation to join with him in worshiping the Lord. He is worshiping the Lord. His family is joining to worship him, surely. Thirdly, he's calling upon all the angels to join him in this worship. He's calling upon all the ministers of the Lord to join with him. He's calling all the heavenly hosts to join with him. And then finally, he's calling upon the entire creation to join with him in worshiping the Lord. Why? Because he's that much grateful to the Lord for all that he had, he had received from the Lord. So supposing someone does me a great favor, helps me in a big measure, not only I will be thankful and grateful to him, I will tell my family, I'll tell my friends, I might tell my relatives and ask them to join with me in thanking the person for the favor that I have received from him. This is what exactly David was doing. And that is why in Psalm 68, verse 19, David says there, he has daily loaded us with his benefits. Speaks about the innumerable benefits David received and experienced in his life. He daily loads us, not once in a month or once in a week. Daily, day after day. Loading means we find sometimes the trucks which are loaded with things, goods or material. And when they are on the highway, particularly in India, in the Western countries, in your place, these lorries, they move at a, quite a good speed. But in India, when these lorries are loaded, and sometimes they are overloaded, they go slow. And when they have to negotiate a turn or a car, curve, so it do it, the driver does it very cautiously and very carefully. Otherwise, the whole loaded lorry will topple. That's what David is meaning there. Daily loading us with his benefit. So much so, we are not able to contain them. Beginning with the greatest benefit of our salvation. So that is the reason why in Psalm 103, he's speaking to his soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Then verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He says, don't forget all the benefits. Because in Psalm 68, verse 19, he has already mentioned the innumerable benefits of the Lord being loaded every day in our lives. If only at the end of the day, if we sit down and recollect whatever has happened, how many benefits we receive from the Lord day after day. Many of them without even our asking, without our expectation, beyond our expectation, the Lord is showering his blessings upon us, his benefits upon us. So that's why he's telling his soul, oh my soul, forget not any of these benefits. Now what are these benefits? And if you ask David again, he will give you the same answer. Well, my benefits are loaded every day, loaded benefits every day. But in this, the following verses, from in verses three, four, and five, David is mentioning five very, very important benefits he has, he has been experiencing in his life. Now, this is not only David's experience, it is the experience of every believer. Every one of us have or in the enjoyment, ex our experience of these five benefits for which we also are bound to thank and praise him this morning. 
Let us see briefly what these then five important benefits are. First of all, he says in verse three, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Notice this uh, sentence very carefully. Who forgiveth. He has not said forgiven. He forgiveth. It is in the present continuous tense. Even today, even this morning when you woke up, along with your personal worship, you would have had to ask the Lord's forgiveness. And was it denied? No. He was forgiven whatever you have asked of him to forgive. And he says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. They are not just one or two, not a few. All our iniquities. And how does he forgive our iniquities? The same psalm, David says, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. The distance between east and west cannot be measured. To that extent, our sins and iniquities have been forgiven. Our transgressions have been forgiven from us. That is the meaning of the Lord's forgiveness. And in the word of God, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 44 and verse 22, let us see how he deals with our sins and iniquities. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 22. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. He has blotted out like a thick cloud. What does the thick cloud do? The thick cloud prevents light. There's only darkness that comes out of thick cloud. That was how our sin and the condition in which we were in the past with our transgressions. But now that cloud has been removed and that is why in the place of darkness, in the place of cloud, the light of the Lord has shined in our hearts. And the cloud also hinders visibility. We have no spiritual visibility. We have no spiritual vision. That was because of our sins. When our sins were blotted out, we were able to receive this heavenly vision, the divine vision, the godly vision in our lives. So that is why all our sins, which were like thick cloud, have been blotted out. And then see Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. He will not remember our sins. He has not only blotted out our transgressions, He's not only removed them as far as the east, east from the west, but also when he forgives, he will remember our sins and iniquities no more. That's what we read in the book of Hebrews also. Your sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. In this world, our parents, our siblings, our friends, our relatives, sometimes we offend them, do something against them. When we ask their forgiveness, when we tender the word of apology, they forgive. They are ready to forgive. Some may not be, but many. Most of them, they will forgive. But all of them will not forget what you have done against them. After some years, they would still remember what you have done against them, how you offended them. So this is, that is man's attitude. But when the Lord forgives, he forgives and forgets. Your sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. Is this not a great benefit? How many sins? How much of iniquities were in us? How many times we have been transgressing against the Lord? Our lives are full of transgressions. But he has removed all of them, forgiven all of them. He has washed and cleansed us. In the book of Micah also we read that he has cast all of our sins 
in the depths of the sea. We do not know how deep the sea is, isn't it? But whatever it is, as the word of God says in the book of Micah, that our sins have been cast into the depths of the sea so that they cannot be brought out. They cannot be remembered. It is said the average depth of an ocean is about 3.7 kilometers or 2.3 miles. Now you can, you can imagine the depth of the ocean. So deep our sins have been cast down, never to be brought out again. So this is the first favor, the first benefit of forgiving all our iniquities. And the word of God says, is not only forgiven in the past, even today, even tomorrow also, whatever we come, commit, wherever we fail, wherever we grieve him, wherever defilement comes into us, when we ask him, he's only ready to forgive. There is no limit to his forgiving our sins and iniquities. Who can do that? This is the first great benefit David also has experienced. That is why in Psalm 32, verse 1, he says, Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven, whose transgressions are covered. Then the second benefit we see in Psalm 103 and verse 3, the second part. Who healeth all thy diseases. Again, notice that word all and healeth. He forgives all our sins. There is no sin that the Lord cannot or could not forgive. Then secondly, he heals all our diseases. He healeth. It's a daily process. Even today, as we pray for our physical sickness, the Lord keeps healing us. There is no sickness that he cannot heal. But you may say, why isn't the Lord heal me of my sickness with which I have been suffering for some years perhaps? The answer for that you'll find in John's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 4, where the Lord said concerning Lazarus, the sickness is not unto death, but unto the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. That's why somehow in some of our lives, he allows sickness so that he is glorified through our sickness. The Lord has allowed even sickness in my own life for so many years. And that is for his glory. And in the sickness, I'm able to experience his grace. So he heals us of all our sickness. How many times whenever we were sick, others were sick, in the family, in the church, our relatives, our colleagues also, our friends, we prayed for them and the Lord has healed them. More than this uh, physical healing, the Lord has been bringing about the spiritual healing because that is very important for the Lord. Not the physical sickness, the spiritual sickness. And that is the reason why in Mark's Gospel chapter 2, when the man sick of palsy was brought to the Lord, he did not say, take up thy bed and walk. That came later on in verse 12. But in verse 4, the Lord Jesus looked at him and said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. That is the first healing. So he gave him the spiritual healing first. And then only later on, the physical healing. Because if we had stopped with physical healing, and if we had done, given him only physical healing, would have got up and gone away, but would have gone away without spiritual healing and would have gone into eternal damnation. The Lord was more concerned about his spiritual healing. And that is why in our lives also, time and again, there do come spiritual sicknesses, even though we are born again. At, at that time, what does the Lord do? The promise, as we read in Psalm 107 and verse 20, he sent a word and healed them. That is our healing. That is our medicine. Time and again, he sends this medicine of his word and heals us. Restores us back to our spiritual health and strength. So that is the second benefit. First benefit is a forgiver. Forgives all our iniquities. 
Secondly, he's a healer, healer of all diseases, beginning with the spiritual healing and then the physical healing also. Then the third blessing we find in verse 4 Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Destruction. What is this destruction? This destruction is brought about by that great destroyer, Satan. He's called as a destroyer. So if you read in Psalm 17, Psalm 17 and verse 4, these are the words of David again. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. The paths of the destroyer. This is the path laid by the destroyer Satan. And David was able to protect himself from those parts. Otherwise, the enemy wants to bring destruction in our lives. That's why he's called as a destroyer. But time and again, the Lord prevents us. He redeems us. He brings us from the clutches of destruction. Just as David delivered the lamb from the mouth of the lion and the bear, the power of the bear, the Lord delivers us from destruction. In one translation, it says, who redeems their life from the grave. That is also true. Many a time, you can or some people can testify. They say, I was near unto the grave. I was almost one step into the grave. But the Lord brought me back. The Lord restored me. So this is the uh, third blessing of the Lord. Third benefit of the Lord. The Lord delivers us from the clutches and the, the subtle devices of the enemy who wants to destroy us. Then fourthly, in that same verse 4, the second part, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Notice that word crowned. All these words are coming in that present continuous tense. Who forgiveth who healeth, who redeemeth, who crowneth. It's a continuous process. He is our crowner. He is our honorer. And what is a crown? Not a golden crown studded with diamonds. This crown, he says, is made of his loving kindness and tender mercies. We all know the crowns are worn upon the head. It's conspicuously seen. It's a sign of honor. It's a sign of dignity. It shows that you belong to a royal family. In the same way, the Lord is giving this crown, crowning the believer every day, continuously. And what is this crown? It is made up of his loving kindness. Not just his kindness. This is coupled with love. Loving kindness. And tender mercies. You know, his mercies are great. In Psalm 136, the whole psalm speaks about the enduring mercy of the Lord. But here he says, the tender mercies. We can, we can experience that. The tenderness of his mercy, time and again. Otherwise, we should not be alive upon this earth. We should have been consumed long ago. His mercies are great. His mercies are new every morning. And his compassion, they pay not. Then finally, verse 5. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. He satisfies our mouth with good things. Speaks about the satisfaction we receive from our Lord. So he is our satisfier too. And how does he satisfy us? With good things alone, not with mediocre things, not that which is not so good. It is always good because the Lord is good. And whatever comes from our Lord, whatever he gives to us is always good, really beloved. That's why the Psalm of David says, go taste and see that the Lord is good. Because his goodness also 
which an enduring goodness endures for ever so he is our satisfier satisfies us with only good things and he says in the second part so that the youth is renewed like the eagles what actually it means is your strength is renewed like the eagle new strength fresh strength he empowers us with his strength and that is as a result of his goodness that is extended to us so these are the five most important benefits that david is mentioning in this psalm now dearly beloved it is not only david's experience it is the experience of every believer it is my experience i'm sure it is your experience also so therefore this morning for these five experiences let us also join with david let us also say bless the lord o my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord o my soul and forget not all his benefits so may the lord help us to bring our praises and worship and adoration for these five benefits beginning from the greatest and the most important benefit of forgiveness of our sins and we know this forgiveness of sin did not come so easily but at a great price the great price paid by our loving savior on the cruel cross of calvary enduring all the pain all the suffering all sorrow all shame for your sake and my sake and that is how this very first benefit was handed over to us so remembering these five benefits let us bring our worship to him this morning